It's tea with tea quilts and today I'm coming with a paper chain block and we're actually making it in Christmas fabrics. It's an optional block for our gill that's due this month. So I thought I would share the process with you as I go along. Very simple block this month. What we actually need is just two different contrasting fabrics so you can see the value between the two. And then we're going to cut from each fabric three five inch squares. So I have all three in a green here and then all three in this lighter coordinating print. In addition to that, I'm going to make this block twice. So I am also going to use the coordinating print with the coordinating light print with this red as well. So I'll be making two blocks doing this video. When you have your two sets of blocks cut on one set of your blocks, you want to go ahead and draw a diagonal line down the center and then you are actually going to go to your sewing machine and you're going to stitch one quarter of an inch on both sides of that drawn line. So I'll do that step and I will come right back. Now I have my square where I had drawn the line down the center and then I have stitched a quarter of an inch line on each side. Just want to make sure you can see that. And then the next step is we need to square these up to four and one half inches. They're going to finish at four inches. So I'm going to use my quilt in a day ruler. It's a triangle square up ruler. And first thing that I'm going to do with it is I'm just going to cut this unit apart. And so now I have my light fabric on one side and then my red on the other. I'm just going to put one of these aside and it's always difficult for me to cut in the frame because my camera is actually right in the middle where I need to be standing. But on this quilt in the day ruler, if you want to square something to four and a half inches, then you put the four and a half inch line on the actual seam line that you sewed and you just center it. And so now that I have at least something hanging out on all sides, I can go ahead and square up my two sides. Now, notice that I said square up my two sides. When you're using the quilt in the day ruler, you're actually squaring up with your half square triangle closed. And right now, this is four and a half inches but what I want to do while it's still flat is trim off my dog ears if I don't trim off the dog ears when I press my seam either over or open got my daughter's doggy here today you still will have the dog ears out there so while it's flat I want to go ahead and where this last seam ends where the last stitch is on this, see if I can zoom you in. So right at this last stitch, I want to just take my rotary cutter, put it there and go straight down and take off that dog ear. I will repeat that and do the exact same thing. So my stitch ends right here and I just wanna go up straight and trim off the dog ears. And I think you missed me trimming that dog ear up. So we'll do it again. Let me zoom out. So you can see me square this unit up first. Four and a half inch on the line. You can center it. Or just make sure you're straight on the line here. Your four and a half inch line is on your seam line and you've got room on both sides. So 
So now I'm going to zoom back in so we can trim off the dog ears. So you can see where that point ends right here. I'm just going to put it down and trim it off. And then we're going to do the same thing on this dog ear. We're going to put the rotary cutter down where the last stitch is. Go straight up. So now at this point you can go set your seam and then press your half square triangles open. So I would first set my seam with the iron this way before opening and then I would go ahead and open this half square triangle and I just like to press my seams and my half square triangles open. So I would press that open with an actual iron. I've already done that step with the remaining units. So you can see where they're all pressed open. And I will use my second set of blocks now so I can show you how this block is laid out. It's a very simple block and so we just want to put these into two rows of three half square triangles. So we have our light background here and then we're going to make like a point with it. So on the bottom row we just want to match those half square triangles. See if I can slide that up just a little bit. And then our next row, we want to put like so. And this block is like that. So you kind of have a diamond in the middle. And then the remaining row you want to put on the opposite side exactly the same. So this is your actual paper chain block. And now what I'm going to do is just go and sew a quarter seam down this way. And once that's connected, I will then come back and add a quarter inch seam on here. And when I'm done, all three of these will be sewn together. And I'll be right back with that. I'm back with my sewn block. I have all of my pieces connected in the rows and then now I just need to sew this final row seam so that's what's not sewn here. And I just wanted to show you on the back side that I just went ahead and pressed all of these seams open to keep it all uniform. And now the next step would be to just sew this seam here together. So we just flip the top down and here you do want to use some pins and you do want to get your match points so that you know that your seams are going to align. And then you want to pin those and then sew your one quarter of an inch seam. Now once you have sewn this seam together, you're going to have these connecting threads still here from when you sewed your blocks into the... You want to clip those if you plan to press your seams open. So if you don't, your seams may be a little stressed to be pressed open. So just go ahead and clip those. If you leave a lot of space in between your chain stitching, you leave a lot of thread, then you probably don't have to worry about it. But I'm one of those people that I just put them right next to each other. So I would have to cut that. And then once you get that, you're going to go to your urn and you're going to actually press this center row open as well. And then here is your completed block, the paper chain quilt block. And I am going to make this block up in EQ and then I'm going to show you how it would look as a completed quilt in a row by row quilt. We'll see you next time. Thank you all so much for watching, supporting my channel. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you'll be alerted anytime I do a premiere video, upload a new video, or go live in the chat room. Also, share it with your quilty friends, and I thank you all. And also, don't forget to share my channel with your quilty friends. Happy Vlogmas, everybody. Bye-bye.